G'day folks, Nat here from Living Entertainment. Today I want to talk about Audio Lab's new range topping products, the 9000 series. There is two models in this range, the 9000A integrated amplifier and the 9000 CDT CD transport. Let's start with the 9000A integrated amplifier. First and foremost, most of you probably want to know how much power the amplifier's got. Well, it's 100 watts at 8 ohm and 160 watts at 4 ohms. Plenty enough power to drive most speakers. Now, today for our testings, we actually decided to test it with the most likely pairing, and that is the Wharfdale Evo 4.4 floor standing speakers. We'll go into a little bit more detail about the sound signature later on in this video, so stay tuned for that. Now let's talk about features, but before I can talk about features, I need to clarify what I think this product or who I think this product was designed for. As the 9000 series is their flagship range, I believe Audio Lab's intention here was one of a purest path. They're focused on a component-based system with a simplified integrated amplifier rather than one with a whole heap of functionality. Now to those features. Like most Audio Lab products, one of the unique things about their integrated amplifiers is they have a mode function on the front of it that allows you to use it as an integrated amplifier, a pre-power, and as a pre-amplifier, which means if you've got a very powerful external power amplifier that you'd like to tack on, you certainly can. On the front, you'll see a 4.3 inch IPS LCD screen. Now that screen I personally find to be very helpful. It allows you to toggle through the menu and look at things like a, the uh, digital filter modes, which has a sleuth of options there from fast to slow roll-offs, everything you could possibly want to fine tune it. Uh, it also allows you to go into the settings mode and have a look at some of those functionalities as well. Uh, on that same panel, it also allows you to do uh, digitized VU meters. Now that could be in the form of a sideways bar or more of the traditional needle style. The amplifier has a high quality digital to analog converter built in. It's the ESS9038 Pro DAC chip. Now that will process up to DSD 512. It is a full MQA decoder as well. You can access the DAC through a myriad of inputs such as digital coax, optical, PC, USB, and Bluetooth. Now, a quick note on Bluetooth, the amplifier actually features a thing called LDAC, which is actually a really high quality for uh, Bluetooth. Not many people know about this, but if you have the ability to stream uh, in Bluetooth with the LDAC, you'll find it's far superior to most of the AppDecs, even the AppDecs HD. The amplifier features a set of balanced XLR inputs and a moving magnet phono stage built in for all you vinyl enthusiasts. On the front, it's got a dedicated headphone amplifier featuring a 6.35 or full-size headphone socket, which is certainly something that I appreciate when using high-quality headphones. During the testing, I was using the Dan Clark Aeon 2 closebacks, and I have to say, I thought the performance was outstanding for something that it essentially built in to uh, integrated amplifier. The performance was similar to that of a mid-priced external headphone amplifier. Now something I think worthwhile talking about here is the 12 volt triggers on the back of the amplifier. Now what they do is essentially trigger the amplifier to turn on. So if you've got the accompanying 9000 CDT, all you simply have to do is turn the CD player on and that will actually trigger the amplifier on as well. So making functionality certainly easy. Now additionally you could also use say something like a Blue Sound node streamer if you wanted to integrate your TV or streaming, and that could also be used to trigger on that amplifier, making it a seamless operation. Now moving on to the fit and finish and tactility of the 9000A. It's a really solid chassis, much more solid than what you'll see in the 6000 series, for example. 
nice heavy aluminium. The overall finish of the product is on more of a, I suppose you would say, sort of satiny, a little bit more shiny finish than their previous products. And it gives it an air of classiness, I suppose you could say. The knob feel is very similar to that of the 6000 and 7000 series. It's got a click to it as you turn the dials around. It's fairly nicely weighted, but not too heavy. It's very easy to click through them and certainly a speedy uh, navigation through the settings or volume. Now the next model in the range is the 9000 CDT CD Transport. Now let's talk about that word, CD Transport. What that actually means is that this particular CD player does not have an internal digital to analog converter or DAC if you like. The reason they don't have that DAC inboard is because it's already featured in the 9000A integrated amplifier and it happens to be a very good one, the 9038 Pro ESS DAC. Now more than likely Audiolab's reasoning for this is simply to save you the consumer more money. Why include something twice and make the product more expensive if you already have it featured in another product. That'll actually save you quite a lot of money. Now, additionally, if you already own a high quality digital to analog converter, you can certainly use that with the 9000 CD and route that signal through your DAC and then into whatever integrated amplifier or pre-power amplifier you may have already. Now, some of the features of the 9000 CDT are similar to that of the 9000A. It has that same 4.3 color IPS LCD screen on the front, once again, helping you navigate through tracks and the inputs. The coaxial output on the 9000 CD is fed by a differential output driver. That is to ensure that the signal path stays as pure as possible whilst reaching the external digital to analog converter. The master clock is controlled by a high quality crystal oscillator. Now I know that's a mouthful and what that actually translates through to is that there's less jitter in that line once again to that digital to analog converter for both the optical and the coaxial outputs. Now one of the major downfalls of a lot of CD players is vibration. You can imagine when you've only got a fairly minimal chassis that when those CDs get up to speed and they oscillate very fast, you do get some vibration through that chassis, which inevitably ends up in jitter, or I suppose a degradation of sound quality would be the way you'd say it. Now the beauty of the 9000 CDT is that it once again shares that chassis with the 9000A, which is a hefty piece of equipment. Now the sub chassis and external panels are quite rigid, which means that you've got quite a lot of dampening going on there. Additionally, it features a low friction loading tray. Now, arguably one of the best features in this CD transport is its read ahead digital buffer, allowing you to play back otherwise unreadable CDs. Now, if you're like the rest of us and you collect multitude of CDs, some of them probably got a scratch or two on them, or if you buy them secondhand, some of those CDs would have otherwise been unreadable by other CD players. But because of this feature, you'll be able to use those to their full capacity. Now the bit you've probably been waiting for, let's talk about that sound quality. As mentioned, we are pairing the 9000 series up with the Wolfdale 4.4s for our testing, as we find this is going to be one of the more likely scenarios that they would get paired with. For our testings, obviously we paired up the 9000 CDT with the 9000A. We also paired the 9000 with two other amplifiers, both the Hegel H120 and the Marantz Model 30. But the Model 30 didn't come into play until we added in the Chord Cutest because the Model 30 does not have an internal DAC. But we thought it would be also very important to test the 9000A and the Hegel H120 through the cutest so that we had a similar sounding source and DAC and that way we could just focus on the amplifier itself in other words the analog stage and not having a DAC in, uh, in front of that so we could tell what the, the true sound of each amplifier sounded like. 
Before we added the cord cutest into the mix, we obviously just used the coaxial out into the 9000A from the CDT and had a really good listen on those Wolfdale 4.4s. Now I have to say straight out of the gate, as of experience before, I was really impressed with this sound. It doesn't jump out at you with uh, massive dynamics or uh, a, you know, a really forward treble, but it's very well balanced right throughout. Even more surprising was the actual amount of detail retrieval. It really had good layering between each of the instruments. And I think the key word with that combination is texture. It had it in spades. I could really hear the sound of the drum skins and the sound of the bass guitar string being plucked. It was all very transparent, but once again, it wasn't pushed at you in a hard or harsh kind of way. It was just there and very much appreciated um, by me when I was listening to that, com that, that particular combination. We then used the Hegel um, and we connected that once again via a digital connection to the Hegel's internal DAC. Now something that really surprised me here was that the Hegel actually sounded more, I suppose, a little bit more warm sounding. It wasn't actually as detailed as the Audio Lab. Now Hegel is a, a company that I personally really love. They're, they're detailed, they're fast paced, they've got plenty of bottom end. But in this case, I have to say, it was actually trumped by the 9000A. Um, it has to be probably my new go-to as a reference. The, the 9000A was just a fantastic sounding product. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive, um, about 10% more in fact, but um, it also comes with uh, more power. The Hegel has a 75 watt um, at 8 ohms, whereas um, the 9000A has the 100 watts. The overall clarity between the instruments was greater with the 9000A. If you wanted a more lush, warm sound with this particular combination in the Wolfdale 4.4s, the Hegel would be a really good choice. Certainly probably more forgiving of really bad recorded uh, recordings in this scenario. Now with that being said, naturally my thought pattern went, well maybe this difference between these two amplifiers is actually just coming down to the internal DACs in both the Hegel um, and the Audio Lab. So, that's when we introduced the cord cutis so that we could have a control in this scenario. But um, it was much the same scenario. So uh, credit to both Hegel and Audio Lab, they obviously have a really tight sonic signature between both their analog stages and their digital stages. I found very much the same result. I would say though that the Hegel did step up a little bit more in the transparency with the cutis in line though. But the vast majority of that sonic signature between the two on the 4.4s was still there. And now that the Cutis was in the chain, we could actually test the Marantz Model 30. And I'd probably say sonically, the Marantz was bang on in the middle of the Hegel and the Audio Lab. Had a little bit more detail retrieval, but it still had this sense of lushness to its sound. Even though it's a Class D, it still has this, this typical Marantz sonic signature. The CDs we listened to were Toto, of course, yes, we listened to Africa. We also um, listened to Pink Floyd, The Wall, and uh, we listened to some wailing guitars from Joe Satriani. So a little bit of a, um, a varied mix there. I have to say that I think this new 9000A with these Wharfdale 4.4s is an absolute wonderful pairing. Now, when I talk about these other amplifiers, in other words, the, the Model 30 and the Hegel, even though they got outs in this particular combination, that's not to say that another combination wouldn't suit them better. I think that's something that most people tend to focus on. They say, this amplifier is vastly better than all these other ones. Well, it probably is in that combination that you listen to it. But there is a lot of combinations between speakers and sources that create an overall sound. Some amplifiers, however, have the ability to sound very good across a vast majority of speakers. And I can say that in my testings, the Audio Lab is one of those. 
I'm fairly confident if you've got a good set of speakers that you like, the Audio Lab will sound amazing on them as well. So in essence, if you're somebody that is looking for a more of a purist system, a more traditional class AB amplifier that you want to be of a high quality and aren't interested in having extra features like a CD player or streamer built in, you should really consider the 9000A. It is an absolute fantastic performer at its price point and well above. If you are looking for a really high quality CD player or CD transport, more importantly, you should also really consider the 9000 CDT. There's not many CD players at its price that offer a chassis, let alone a uh, LCD screen that perform as well as it does. It is actually a really good sounding transport and the combination of the two is absolutely a winner. All right, folks, that just about wraps it up for the 9000 series. If you'd like to know more about either one of the products, please feel free to reach out to us. You can do that by giving us a call on 02662265694. You could email us at info at lenc.com.au or you could simply comment below this video. Thanks again. Bye for now.